the presentation of anarchism, anarchism. a social philosophy which aims at the emancipation, economic, social, political, and spiritual of the human race. The emancipation. Anarchist Essays is brought to you by Loughborough University's Anarchism Research Group. For more information on the ARG, see the link in the show notes or follow us on Twitter at ARGLBORO. Solidarity, the Sea, and Subverting State Power by Lisa Matthews. This is what we sailors do. If there are people in danger at sea, we save them, without asking where they come from or the colour of their skin. These are the words of Captain Carlo Giarratano, a Sicilian fisherman interviewed by the Guardian newspaper in August 2019, after he'd helped 50 people, migrants, on a dinghy off the coast of Libya. Giarratano was on a nighttime fishing expedition when he encountered the boat that had run out of fuel and was taking on water. He gave them all the food and drink he had, while his father coordinated an aid effort from land, and Giarratano waited with the dinghy for nearly 24 hours, until an Italian Coast Guard vessel arrived and transferred the stranded to Sicily. Giarratano, whose family have fished the Mediterranean for four generations, describes his decision in terms of an incredibly strong human connection. He said, I'd be lying if I told you I didn't think I might end up in prison when I saw that dinghy in distress, but I knew in my heart that a dirty conscience would have been worse than prison. I would have been haunted until my death and maybe even beyond by those desperate cries for help. Another fisherman, this time British, who fishes in the English Channel, described a similar bond of humanity when he was interviewed on the radio station LBC about his interaction with small boats of people trying to make it to Britain. He recounted staying with a boat till the lifeboat arrived and said, it was one of the most moving things that's ever happened to me in my life, seeing the fear in those kids' eyes. And of the parents, they're coming to better the lives of their children. These perspectives might be seen as exceptional, but they reflect ordinary people's lives crossing each other. One person going about their often dangerous livelihood Another forced to undertake a perilous journey in an unseaworthy boat as a result of war, persecution or economic inequality. I have sought out and cherished these glimpses of person-to-person aid, of, of solidarity, at a time when it has felt sometimes difficult to believe in the instinctive goodness of humankind. As a reminder of the possibilities of cooperation between us, not competition of the potential for connections when othering and fear-mongering are the dominant tropes of government and many sections of the media. As I watched, helpless and appalled, as Sky and BBC journalists oh so easily commandeered fast and functioning boats in order to film those who've risked everything, paid everything, for a boat that can barely keep its occupants alive. And of course, there are many of these stories of hope, of kindness, of love, for our fellow humans, if we look for them. Simple acts of care and compassion flourish, despite, maybe because of, the hostile and often lethal anti-migration policies across Europe. So many of these stories are located on the water. The sea, so treacherous to those forced to navigate it, also seems to offer opportunities for alternative ways of acting, indeed of alternative ways of imagining ourselves, of belonging, the land and its boundaries, of what divides and connects us. Imogen Doby of the Refugee Studies Centre at Oxford has recently written of how maritime spaces and the actors who work in these spaces often exist outside conventional frames of analysis. Maritime spaces like the Mediterranean Sea, she says, are also often understood in the popular imagination as dangerous spheres of lawlessness and unpredictability the wild antithesis of organised civilization. Oceans are perceived as void-like spaces that are cut off from society and insulated from political and social forces. There are many laws that operate at sea and contested duties of states to rescue those in distress, but also deeper, older forms of mutual responsibility, a maritime principle of helping those who need it. This person-oriented approach is invaluable at a time when formal legal rights are being eroded, 
and at all times for those of us who believe in our capacity to govern ourselves. It's an approach, however, restricted by the sovereignty of states. The recent example of the rescue boat funded by the artist Banksy and named after anarchist Louise Michel demonstrates all too clearly perhaps the potential limitations of autonomous action in an environment ultimately ruled over by nation states. The British street artist secretly funded a boat to rescue people trying to cross to Europe from North Africa. The boat quickly rescued nearly 100 people in distress in the central Mediterranean and then proceeded to safeguard over 200 people off the coast of Libya. At capacity, the crew of the boat described themselves as being in a state of emergency, while European authorities failed to react to their distress calls. For days, the boat was effectively stranded, as European states maintained their borders and refused to allow the people on board to land. Eventually, the Italian Coast Guard took charge of 49 of the people most in need of help, and the rest were later transferred to a quarantine vessel off Sicily. Do we see this as a success? of action by the people forcing states to take responsibility for saving lives, or as an initiative at the mercy of the power of the state. Migrant justice activists aren't the only ones using the unique situation of the ocean to subvert state power. The pro-choice organisation Women on Waves takes advantage, in the words of Amelia Weber, of the legal pluralities of ocean space to reveal the state's limits and, within a legal loophole, create a temporary autonomous space where abortions can take place. Weber's article also provides a helpful counterpoint to the image of autonomous activists blocked from docking stranded survivors by state actors described above. In her piece entitled Vessels, published in Map magazine, she reminds us of the international strike in solidarity with Liverpool dock workers in 1997, in which she notes that seven countries and 105 ports illegally stopped work. Ports along the entire west coast of America came to a halt, alongside 40,000 dock workers in Japan, Sydney and all the ports in South Africa. Weber writes that she loves the image of ships filled with cargo, circling the world's oceans, unable to dock. A clear demonstration of how important the workers' labour is. A strike, a withdrawal of labour, might be thought of as a ceasing, a termination, an abortion of work, but this withholding is generative. It produces new ways of relating and thinking and being together. The increasing attempts by European states to criminalise maritime rescue and humanitarian aid is alarming. But even here, solidarity shines through and oppressive measures do not remain unchallenged. When the captain of the rescue boat Sea Watch, Carola Rochetta, was arrested in Italy in 2019... A million euros was swiftly raised in support of her, donated by members of the public. Her arrest was later reversed by an Italian judge who said she was fulfilling her duty to protect human lives. Rochetta said of her experience, I was very touched by the solidarity expressed to me by so many people. Solidarity extends beyond journeys across the sea. Once people make it to land, many individuals, groups and organisations step up to stand side by side with people seeking the right to stay in the country. In my professional life as coordinator of the organisation Right to Remain, I get to see examples of this happening across the UK. There are people helping someone prepare for the gruelling asylum interview, sitting with someone after they've had their asylum interview, sometimes just to help them feel a bit better Sometimes the very focused aim of talking about what went wrong in the interview so they can share this with a lawyer and submit a statement to the Home Office. People take very practical actions, like making sure someone knows where their interview with the Home Office is and how to get there. Or the simple act of being there, maybe going along to an appeal hearing to be a friendly face for someone who has their appeal. There's visiting someone if they're detained and helping them apply for bail to be released from immigration detention. Other practical things like community childcare if someone has an appeal hearing and responding to basic needs like providing food parcels and sanitary items for people who are destitute, hosting people who are homeless. And then there's what could be categorised as direct action, anti-immigration raids actions, alerting people to immigration raids that are happening, notifying people subject to the raids of their legal rights, filming what's happening. There's a real variety of people who get involved in these actions. Sometimes it's people seeking asylum and other undocumented folk helping each other out. There can be long periods when not much is happening in your case and some people use that time to help others out. 
And sometimes it's local people who have more secure immigration status or British citizens. These are the people and actions I think of on those dark days when we hear of another death, of the harm, cruelty and injustice that the immigration system inflicts on people. These solidarity actions are crucial, but they're not above critique. Nadine Alanani, senior lecturer in law at Birkbeck University, cautions in her book Bordering Britain, Race, Law and Empire against migrant justice activists relying on recognition processes, that is, asking the state to grant leave to remain or citizenship. Alanani argues that these solidarity strategies rely on the preeminence of the principle of state sovereignty and that the granting of immigration status or citizenship will always be an act of colonial bestowing. Alanani's position is that recognition regimes, particularly refugee law, allows Britain to conceal its colonial history and present beneath a veneer of humanitarianism, and that legal recognition processes use assimilationist logic that delegitimise claims to redistributive and reparative justice. In an article for the Australian literary magazine Overland, Sarah Keenan, also a lecturer in law at Birkbeck, reflects on the ocean as a site of potential subversion, as well as emphasising the critical point also made by Alanani, that solidarity cannot just be about bringing people within the colonial state. Keenan describes the solidarity organising taking place in opposition to the imprisoning of 180 men who have travelled to Australia to seek protection in hotels in Brisbane and Melbourne. And she locates both the state's actions and activist responses within the context of stolen land, Australia as an ongoing and international white supremacist colonial project. Keenan believes that refugee boats are vessels of resistance against state oppression and against nation-state borders. They harness, she says, the subversive power of the sea as dynamic, ungovernable sites of ceaseless change and movement Oceans point to alternative geographies of borders and histories of race. Perhaps in these solidarity actions, some of which I've described here, so often happening quietly, effectively and persistently while political and media attention is diverted by spectacle, we are not just resisting the actions of our states, but the concept of the state itself. As Keenan writes so hopefully... We are not just denying the legitimacy of the border and the colonial regime it protects. We are also dismantling the border and building something else. Thank you for listening. To help others find Anarchist Essays, please rate and review us wherever you find your podcasts. And if you're interested in anarchist ideas, why not check out the journal Anarchist Studies? For over 20 years, Anarchist Studies has been publishing original research on the history, theory, and practice of anarchism. For more information, visit www.lwbooks.co.uk forward slash anarchist studies.